Hello all, welcome back to Trinity Software. Let's build a simple web application with Flask framework in Python in this video. Here is a small introduction about Flask. It's actually a micro framework to build web applications. It has a built-in development server and debugger. I'm using PyCharm Community Edition to do the Flask project. Before starting, we have to install Flask by using the command pip install flask in command prompt. Okay, this uh, project we are going to connect MySQL database with our Flask framework. To do that, few libraries are available, namely Flask MySQL and Flask MySQL DB. But in this project, I have used MySQL connector Python. I have already made a video about how to connect Python with MySQL database. I have given the link for that video in the description below. I am using that same package here in our Flask project. So let's start creating the Flask project. So this is the root directory Trinity Python. Under this I am going to create a directory for our project. So new directory, the folder name Flask MySQL, whatever you prefer. So Flask MySQL. Under this directory I am just going to create a file, a Python file with the name app.py. So initially I am going to import Flask. From flask, import flask. Now you have to create an app instance. So app flask of name. The next step is we are going to make use of a special python decorator which flask provides. Namely at app.root and slash. So this decorator will assign URLs to the associated functions that is intended to perform that specific task. So here this URL will be assigned to this function df index. Here I am just going to return a statement that will be printed in our web application. A welcome message, welcome to Trinity software. Okay. Next in order to make this application run we have to give if name equal to main okay then app dot run you can run this application by running this app dot py file and by default flask runs a local server at port 5000 so i need to go to this folder flask mysql right so flask mysql here python app dot py this is the local host address with the port number 5000. So you can open the browser and check the output there. We got the output as welcome to Trinity software. In order to quit the server, you can press Ctrl C. Next, we are going to add some more functionalities to our Flask app. I am just going to have another decorator at app.root with this URL slash registration so the corresponding function is defreg registration okay this is going to return some other message registration details Fine. and one more functionality i'm going to add here is set the debug is equal to true so this will activate the automatic reloader so that now you can edit your file and the server will be automatically restarted and Whatever the changes you are doing here, that will be updated in your output. So we'll do this python app.py now. Okay. So here we have got slash registration. Registration details is printed. Now if you make a change to this code, Trinity registration details when the server is running, you can see the changes in the output. Right, fine. Okay, now it's time to connect our flask with our database. I have installed MySQL connector python using pip statement. So this is the code which I have already used in the previous video. That is how to connect your python code with the MySQL. I have imported mysql.connector, how connection is set up and how we are accessing the data from the database using the select query and how the data is printed. Okay, now I'm just going to make use of this same concept with the different database. So I just copy this statement till this and I will place it here. Instead of hospital database, I am going to use a different database namely Trinity 
registration you will see that database so this is the database name trinity registration which contains this table reg underscore member the students who have registered for different courses and their corresponding contact details fine now i am going to display these details in our web application port number must be explicitly specified if uh, you have changed the default port number from 3306 to any other port number now i am just going to make changes to this at app.root registration i am going to display the students details who have registered for python course alone so I will just rename this uh, function name as python. We will do some changes here. I have used cursor here right. So cursor dot execute and I am going to pass the query here. Select everything from this table reg underscore member where course equal to python underscore member here. Now I am going to fetch all the contents from the database and I am going to store it in a variable value. Value is equal to cursor dot fetch all. In our web application this must be displayed in the form of a table. So we need some HTML file. In order to do that we are going to return a particular method called render underscore template. In this render underscore template you have to provide the name of the template and the variables here in this case the variables you are passing is this value and the variables you want to pass to that template engine as keyword arguments so let me give a brief introduction about this template engine so this flask framework uses jinja2 templating jinja2 is actually a templating language it contains variables as well as some programming logic which when evaluated are replaced with the actual values so these kind of uh, variables or logic will be placed between tags or delimiters. We will see how it works now. Return render underscore template method. And first argument is the HTML file name. I am going to create a file as registration.html comma and the values to be passed. Data equal to this value should be passed to the value and another variable called name. So this data and name will be used in this registration.html file. So name is equal to course python right. Since we are using render underscore template that must be imported here. Import flask comma render underscore template fine. So now it's time to create our registration.html file. So this must be placed in a templates folder. It is mandatory that the folder name must be templates okay so under flask mysql or project directory i'm going to create a new directory with the name templates fine within templates we are going to create a new file a html file namely registration dot html file html code h1 tab i'll print trinity registration details for the course name right if you want to print something that must be placed within this double curly brackets so in our app.py to print this course name as python that will be accessed using this variable name so i'm just giving this name here then we'll create a table inside the table t head we have tr for the rows and th for the headings I am just going to display student name, then city, contact number and their email address. So we have closed T head, now T body. We have to display the contents of the table. Open curly brackets, percentage symbol for row in data. So this data is what we have given here. Data is equal to the the value which we are going to pass from this cursor.fetchall method right close this percentage symbol and the curly bracket you can close this using percentage end for percentage curly bracket within this we are going to place the data tr td so it should be accessed as row of one that is the column one similarly 
So city details are present in row of 3. Contact number is present in row of 5 and email address is present in row of 4. So now we are done with the registration.html. Now we can check our output. So we give slash python. We got an error here. So on clicking this, I will find out where the error has occurred in line 14. I have opened two curly brackets, must be closed, but I didn't close it. So we'll make the changes in our code. So here row of 1, row of 3, row of 5, row of 4. Okay. So Trinity registration details for Python. So this is a simple HTML file. No CSS styling has been done. So later we can add CSS to this. Fine. Here apart from displaying the Python details, I can also display the students who are registered for Java and C++. So I'll just copy this. Okay. The first category is for Python. Then we'll include Java. The function name should be Java. Change. So here also the name must be changed as Java. Similarly for C++. Fine. Now this should uh, display students are registered for Python, Java and C++. I just change this to Java. For Java is displayed. Then for C++ students are registered for C++ is displayed. Okay, now it's in our index page. I'm going to create some buttons so that on clicking a button, it will just redirect to the page where we can see the students are registered for Python, Java and C++ course respectively. Okay, instead of a welcome message here, render underscore template, I will just use HTML file name index.html file alone. Okay, so again in this templates folder, here we are going to create this index html file index dot html let me have a heading stating a welcome to trinity software next i'm going to create three buttons each to connect to three different pages right so button type is equal to must be explicitly specified button type is equal to button uh, i'm going to give this on click event on click window dot location dot href so we are going to change this property equal to we are going to pass a function called url underscore for url underscore for is a function which takes a function name as the first argument so we are going to pass this function python so this function will dynamically build url for this specific function python Close parenthesis, single quotes, finally close this. Okay. So I have created the button. You can name button as Python registration. Similarly, you can create other buttons for Java and C registration. This is for Java and this is for C. You have to change this as the function name Java. You can rename this as Java registration. And the function name for C++ is C++. So use C++ here. And the button name is C++ registration. Fine. So we have got three buttons. I'm clicking Python registration. It is the URL for Python. Then Java registration. The students who are registered for Java course are displayed. Similarly for C++ registration. Now this is a plain HTML file. Now you can add styling to this using CSS. Index.html will add CSS. Within head I will place the style. Within style tag. Styling for h1 tag as well as button tag. Okay. Similarly for registration.html. Head tag. For h1 tag. And for table. Table is made center. And some alignments are done. And background color of the event rows are changed to gray color. Okay, now let's check the output. 
so we got it centralized with the different colors so now i press python registration it's displayed in a neat table format similarly for other two categories so this is a simple web application with flask framework that's it thanks for watching if you like this video kindly share and subscribe for more interesting videos on python